and two students. Boeing CEO steps down after weeks of concern surrounding the safety of their planes. The UN Security Council calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. A class action lawsuit has been filed by the Department of Justice against Apple. The Longhorn men's basketball season comes to an end after a devastating loss during March Madness. This is Texas News Primetime. News made for Longhorns. Good evening, I'm Nick Pantaleone. And I'm Nicole Vargas. Thank you for joining us tonight. We begin tonight with a story right here in West Campus. WestFest, presented by the Texas Interfraternity Council, took place Friday and Saturday. Sororities and fraternities from around UT hosted parties requiring a wristband to attend. Originally called Roundup, the event was rebranded as WestFest with a new focus on safety. UT held the Civil Discord Symposium Thursday and Friday of last week, a series of five moderated debates and panels about civil issues like racism, the role of a university, and political ideologies. Ryan Streeter, Director of Research at the Civitas Institute, moderated the keynote debate titled, Is Liberalism Doomed?, and featured New York Times opinion writer Ross Douthat and Michelle Goldberg. Both speakers agreed that liberalism is declining, but they said that they have hope for its survival because of the lack of good alternatives to liberalism. Connected with WestFest was the 31st, 31st Annual 40 Acres Fest on Saturday. The event lasted 2 to 9 p.m. and featured a carnival, a student booth contest, and a music concert headlined by ex-ambassadors. Around Austin, Texas Hello, a popular center for Jewish students, has been vandalized twice in the past two weeks, initially on Tuesday the 11th and more recently on a Saturday night. In a statement posted on the Texas Hello Instagram, they said that it is distressing to see the, quote, exponential rise in anti-Semitism and hatred, end quote. Pflugerville PD is said to have arrested five people after an attempted traffic stop that turned into a shooting involving an officer. On Sunday morning, officers found a stolen vehicle containing five passengers and attempted to pull them over when the car refused to stop starting a pursuit. Three of the passengers ran from the vehicle, which is when one of the fleeing suspects started firing at officers. No one is reported to have injuries. Peace Park has a new and quite unexpected art installation named Malin. Malin is an 18-foot tall troll made out of recycled and repurposed wood created by Denmark artist Thomas Dembo. The wood used is said to come from an old water tower right here on campus. Dembo has granted the park a 15-year license to the work that is subject to the conservation and maintenance of the sculpture. We begin our statewide coverage with news out of Bastrop. A major collision occurred on Friday as an elementary school bus crashed with a concrete truck on State Highway 21 in Bastrop County. The crash resulted in a total of six people being taken to the hospital and two people dead, including one of the pre-K students. Officials reported that it was a Hayes CISD bus for Tom Green Elementary School. The school has since formed a memorial where families have brought flowers and balloons in honor of the student who passed away. Senate Bill 4, the Texas law being proposed that could allow police to arrest those suspected of illegally immigrating, was once again put on pause last Tuesday. Texas lawmakers have been fighting to put this law into effect since 2023, and it has been halted many times. The Supreme Court allowed the law to go into effect Tuesday, but a federal appeals court once again blocked the law. SB 4 is being challenged for logistical and constitutional reasons. Hundreds of migrants surrounded the El Paso border on Thursday. The U.S. National Guard stood in an attempt to maintain the crowd. However, the group broke through razor wire and knocked over those guards. One man from the group was arrested and others taken in for processing. In totality, Border Patrol has stated that they have detained 425 migrants from the incident. Now, with the latest news and national news, we have Ella Danina. Ella, catch us up. Thanks, Nicole. The CEO of Boeing, Dave Calhoun, announced his decision to step down as CEO at the end of 2024, amid a wave of safety concerns. He will continue to lead Boeing throughout the year to complete the critical work underway to stabilize and position the company for the future, Boeing said in a statement. A door panel blew out on a Boeing 737 MAX plane flown by Alaska Airlines back in January, stirring up many negative stories. In the wake of two air disasters that ended in the death of a total of 346 people back in 2020, Calhoun stepped into the position of power. 
The president and chair of the company's board of directors will step down as well, effective immediately. The future of the company and who will succeed these leaders are in the spotlight and facing pressure. YouTube star and mother of six, Ruby Frankie, faces a 30-year prison sentence following the abuse of her children. Her 12-year-old son was severely malnourished and bruised when he snuck out of a window to a neighbor's house and politely asked them to drive him to the nearest police station. Crime scene photos, body camera video, and interrogation tapes have since been released. A police investigation determined that religious extremism motivated Frankie to inflict abuse on her children. Frankie pleaded guilty to four counts of aggravated child abuse that included her convincing her two youngest children that they were evil and needed to be subjected to manual labor. Months of daily abuse chronicles were released this past Friday in Frankie's personal journal. Former President Donald Trump claimed early Friday that he has nearly $500 million in cash, saying he would rather spend the money on his presidential run than the $450 million bond to New York. The court ruling from Judge Arthur and Gordon last month found that Donald, Eric, and Donald Trump Jr. are guilty of a decade-long conspiracy to lie about the value of their assets, which is fraud. Trump's finances were also lessened following the $92 million bond to satisfy the E. Jean Carroll defamation case. If Trump does not pay the court Monday, the state will seize his assets starting with the funds in his personal account before moving on to his properties. Now, on to our worldwide coverage, continuing on with the latest news is Ella Danina. Tell us, what's happening in the world? Thanks, Nick. The United Nations Security Council demanded a ceasefire for the fighting in Gaza. The United States decided not to veto the demand and abstained from voting. This decision immediately caused an increase in tensions between the U.S. and Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu canceled a planned trip to Washington and criticized the U.S. for allowing the vote to pass without calling for the release of hostages held by Hamas. Terror struck Moscow this past Friday as four ISIS-K gunmen killed 134 people and injured over 100 more before setting fire to Crocus City Hall, where concert goers were gathered. The four suspects have since been arrested and brought into court after first being interrogated in Russian intelligence headquarters. And the attack comes after the U.S. shared intelligence with Russian authorities about the possibility of an attack, advising U.S. citizens to avoid large gatherings, saying that extremists have plans to target large gatherings. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a statement Saturday, quote, We condemn terrorism in all its forms and stand in solidarity with the people of Russia in grieving the loss of life from this horrific event, end quote. Kate, the Princess of Wales, receives warm wishes following her address of a recent cancer diagnosis last week. The princess sat outside of the Buckingham Palace shedding light on the treatment she is receiving, resulting in a wave of warm wishes given by the public, media, and world leaders. There have been outpourings of sympathy and apologies shared after the princess posted a self-altered photo the prior week. The photo, with her three children, was recalled by several news agencies after they determined the image had been manipulated. At this moment, Princess Kate requests privacy and thanks the public for their generous support. When we come back, the landmark lawsuit filed by the DOJ against Apple. Primetime will be right back.
Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Welcome back to Primetime. Here to talk about the latest in the world of STEM, we have Nick Pantaleoni. Thanks, Nicole. Well, it's been a very busy STEM week. On Thursday, the Justice Department accused tech giant Apple of engineering an illegal monopoly in smartphones, which boxes out competitors, stifles innovation, and artificially raises prices. The lawsuit, which was filed in a New Jersey federal court, discusses how Apple allegedly controls its technology and business relationships to, quote, extract more money from consumers, developers, content creators, artists, publishers, and others, end quote. The lawsuit is the newest of antitrust enforcement by the administration, which has also taken on other tech giants such as Google with the aim of making the digital market more innovative and competitive. The Tennessee governor, Bill Lee, signed legislation this past Thursday designed to protect songwriters and other music industry professionals from the potential dangers of artificial intelligence. Under the new act, dubbed the, quote, Elvis Act, photographs and likeness are considered property rather than a right of publicity, which will also extend to vocal likeness. Lee told reporters, quote, artists have intellectual property. They have a uniqueness that is theirs and theirs alone, certainly not artificial intelligence, end quote. The new act makes Tennessee the first state in the U.S. to pass legislation protecting musicians from AI. And have an interest in the world of outer space? Well, mark your calendars for Monday, April 8th, because from 1.32 p.m. to 1.41 p.m. Central Time, students will get to experience a total eclipse of the sun. This occurs when the moon aligns perfectly between the Earth and the sun, casting a shadow that completely blocks out the sun's light. There will be 16, quote, sunspots, end quote, across the university campus where students will be able to pick up their burnt orange eclipse glasses and enjoy eclipse-themed snacks for an optimal viewing of experience. Don't miss out because the next chance to see a solar eclipse from the United States will be in August of 2044. Thank you, Nick. Now on to news in life and arts. An award ceremony set to take place at the Library of Congress was canceled. The ceremony was going to honor four men and one woman, the late RBG Award. However, the Opperman Foundation said the ceremony would be canceled after receiving backlash for this year's recipients. The award had previously only honored women. Jim Ginsburg, RBG's son, said he is, quote, relieved, end quote, that the awards will not continue. The Miss Black UT 2024 pageant is coming up this week. The Texas Black Student Alliance and Texas Spring Fest will be hosting the pageant this Thursday, March 28th at 6.30 p.m. The pageant will take place in William C. Powers Junior Student Activity Center Auditorium, and the attire is dressed to impress. Come see who will take home the crown. The Campus Events and Entertainment's Ancestral Appreciation and Culture Committee will be hosting Global Street Food this week. The event will have samples of street foods from around the world as well as games and activities. Global Street Food will take place this Wednesday, March 27th from 6 to 9 p.m. in the William C. Powers Junior Student Activity Center Ballroom. Anyone with a UTID can attend along with a guest. When we come back, the latest in March Madness for Pressbox on Primetime. We'll be right back.
the puppies, the puppies, the puppies. Get it together, pull over. Welcome back. We have Nick Pantaleone on for Press Box on Primetime. Nick, tell us what's been going on for Texas in March Madness. Well, it's a sad day to be a Longhorn. Uh, beginning into the thick of March Madness, and the Texas Longhorns faced ups and downs this past week. Uh, in the first round, the men's team narrowly took down Colorado State 56-44, to and unfortunately, the men's team then fell short in the second round to Tennessee for the tight final score of 62-58. to The women's team easily defeated Drexel in the first round, 82-42, to and in the second round, the women's team beat Alabama 65 to 54 to advance to the Sweet 16. They are scheduled to play Thursday against the winner of tonight's match between Utah and Gonzaga. We will be rooting for our Lady Longhorns tonight. Thanks for your insight, Nick. Yeah. Coming up, the much awaited finale of The Bachelor is airing live right now. We'll be right back. Thirteen of the 48 club sports offered by the university now require students to submit proof of sex assigned at birth. I know deep down they would probably want to stay with the university. No way in hell anybody's going to tell my daughters what to do with their bodies. This state is one of the worst in child education. We can't take it anymore seeing those scenes. Uh, going to Hillel on Friday night, all my family members like kept like texting me like not to go. There is a huge housing crisis in Austin. Uh, do you have a plan in place to address this issue? Determined to start your day well, Absolutely. wear up bright and early. From the enriching local stories to the weather forecast later in the day, rain or shine, at Good Morning Longhorns, we got you covered. Comprised of a studious reporting staff going links to get that scoop, and a talented technical team to enhance your screen visually. As a fellow Longhorn, your mornings are better with us. So start your day the Vivo way. Good morning, Longhorns. Wednesdays at 7 a.m. Central Time on TSTV. Almost 10 p.m. and we'll know by then. Before this next topic, I do want to offer a warning as we will be talking about Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids' TV. The new docuseries explores former child actors' allegations of abuse on the sets of many popular Nickelodeon shows like Drake and Josh, The Amanda Show, and more. The series adds to the case against producer Dan Schneider after he was removed from the network after many actors came forward about his inappropriate behavior. So, have you seen the series? And if so, what do you make of it? I've seen a few episodes. It is really heartbreaking, but I think it's something that's really important to acknowledge. Um, I think after the Me Too movement, it was really empowering for a lot of people to speak up about a lot of the abuse that goes on in the media industry. So, 
it's really devastating to hear, but it's very enlightening. Mm -hmm. Now, onto a lighter subject. Beyonce will re be releasing her new album, Cowboy Carter, this Friday. The album will continue with the country sound featured on the two singles, Texas Hold'em and 16 Car Carriages. Excuse me. Despite previous criticisms of her joining the country music category, fans are remaining loyal and are extremely excited for the new album. Will you be listening to the new album? I'll give it a try. I'm not a huge fan of country music, but I do love Beyonce as a person from Houston as well. I've got to support my Houston girls. So I think that she's doing fantastic. Like I said a couple weeks ago, Dolly's given her her blessing. So anything she does is it's going to be great. I'm really happy for her to have this opportunity to experience, experiment with her uh, genre of music. That's your Monday briefing. I'm Nicole Vargas. And I'm Nick Pentaleone. From all of us at TSTV News, thank you for watching. Now go out and change your world.